بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, From the surahs that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to recite often This is one of his favorite surahs Is Surah Al-A'la This is a surah he used to recite often and He had, Prophet had favorites And this is one of his favorites, Surah Al-A'la He used to recite this in his witr Every single night he used to recite this surah in his witr and he used to recite it on Jum'ah, in Surat Al-Jum'ah. And he used to recite it on the Eid, the, on the Eid Salah. So he used to have a daily reading of Surat Al-A'la. And he used to have a weekly reading of Surat Al-A'la. And he used to have a yearly or bi-yearly reading of Surat Al-A'la. So this is a surah that was very beloved to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What made Surat Al-A'la beloved to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Uh, we mentioned a few different things that would have made this surah very beloved to him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Number one, it is uh, in terms of its length, it's a very nice length surah. It's not too long, and it's not too short. It's a medium range surah. It's not a long surah, not extremely long, and not even long. It's medium range, and it's not short. It's not extremely short. In the surah, Allah subhanahu wa taala gives two glad tidings to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The first is regarding the Qur'an. So when, at the beginning, when Rasulullah used to re receive revelation, the very beginning, when Jibreel used to come to him, the thing that used to worry the Prophet ﷺ the most was forgetting the Qur'an. And he used to be extremely worried and fearful that he would forget the Qur'an. When Jibreel would come to him, and they wouldn't write down anything, Jibreel would recite to him, and he would repeat after Jibreel ﷺ. And he would be extremely fearful that he would forget. Because if he forgot, now he's not able to deliver the message. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhar rasulu ballig ma unzili ilayka min rabbik. Oh, messenger, uh, send, give the message, right? Relate the message, convey the message of what you have been revealed. Wa illam tafa'al fa ma ballag tu risalata. And if you have not done that, then you have not delivered the message. So if he forgets the verses, how is he going to deliver the message? If he doesn't deliver the message, then he's failed in his mission. So he was very uh, scared of forgetting the verses. And this would cause Rasulullah to be hasty in repeating after Jubil. Jubil would recite the verses. Before Jubil even finished the verses, Rasulullah is repeating after him because he's scared of forgetting. And so Allah revealed verses in the Quran telling him, slow down, don't be so hasty. Don't move your tongue in haste to make haste with it. It is upon us to gather the Qur'an So when it's recited to you, then follow its recitation And in another verse Allah says And do not make haste with the Qur'an before it has been revealed to you So Allah is telling the Prophet some slow down And let Jubil finish reciting And then you take the recitation from him And then Allah makes a glad tidings, a promise So Rasulullah in Surah Al-A'la he says to him, That we will recite to you the verses and you will not forget. So he gave these glad tidings of Rasulullah. You don't have to worry about forgetting the Quran. We will recite to you our verses. And you will not forget. You will not forget. So this was something beloved to him that he liked to hear this. Now he doesn't have to worry about forgetting the Quran. Also in the surah, Allah mentions that. The akhirah wal akhiratu khayru wa abqa. That the akhirah is better and more lasting than the dunya. Rasulullah had a very tough mission, not easy. This is the hardest job you have. The hardest job in the world is to be a messenger, to, to deliver the message to the people. It's the hardest job in the world. And it took a toll on him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And verses like this gave him hope that you're going to undergo difficulties in this life, but the akhirah is waiting for you and it is better and it is more lasting. And finally, at the very end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions two messengers who Rasulullah was influenced and motivated by. And of course, all the messengers he found influence and motivation, but these two in particular were messengers that had a very big, profound impact on him. Suhufi Ibrahim wa Musa. These two messengers in particular, out of all the messengers, they were the most impactful on Rasulullah. And Allah, when He mentions messengers in the Quran in general, 
when he mentions messengers and the story to all the messengers, the point of mentioning these messengers and the stories of these messengers is not for us primarily. We are secondary benefit. The primary reason why Allah mentions stories of the prophets in the Quran is for the Prophet ﷺ, for him, so that he could be motivated and he can find comfort in what they went through. Allah says, everything that we relate to you from the stories of the messengers of the past is for us to make your heart firm. So that we can make your heart firm. Because the Prophet ﷺ went through a lot of insults, verbal, physical abuse. And this would affect him. Allah says that we know that your heart is grieved by what they're saying. They're calling you a liar. They're calling you a sorcerer. They're calling you, you're calling you this. They're calling you that. We know that you are grieved by what they are saying. Allah says that. We know that you are grieved. And so Allah mentions the stories of all these prophets so that Rasulullah can take the uh, benefit in knowing that others went through what he went through. Be patient, like the messengers of strong will and determination were patient. So Rasulullah would find comfort in hearing about the stories of all these messengers before, and in particular, Ibrahim السلام, who he has not only spiritual lineage, but physical lineage. His bloodline goes back to Ibrahim السلام. Ibrahim is the only prophet in the Quran who Allah orders the Prophet to follow. And then we inspire to you to follow the religion of Ibrahim السلام. And it comes in a hadith that Rasulullah was describing various prophets and how they look. And he described Musa السلام, and his physical appearance. And he described Isa السلام, and his physical appearance. And he described Ibrahim السلام, and he was comparing them to different people. He was comparing Musa. Musa looks like this person. Isa looks like this person. And then he said, Ibrahim and the one who resembles him the most is your companion, meaning myself. They had very similar features physically and in terms of their character. And we know that Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, was the one who made dua for the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu He made this dua for, for Allah to send a prophet from amongst the Arabs who would come and recite the verses and purify them. And we know that Rasulullah named his son after Ibrahim. And one of his sons was named Ibrahim. So this was number one influential person amongst all the prophets and messengers and the second is Musa alayhi salam who had a lot of experience with Bani Israel with Fir'aun his name is mentioned more than any other prophet in the Quran and Rasulullah also found inspiration in the mention of Musa so these are a few things which made this surah very beloved to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam glad tidings that he would not forget the Quran glad tidings that the akhirah is waiting for him which is better than what he has to suffer in this life and the mentioning of two of the most beloved prophets to him, Ibrahim alayhi salam, his father, and Musa alayhi salam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to memorize and recite Surah Al-A'la and understand it. Allahumma ameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanahu wa bihamdik nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.